Uh, Kingdom Business Community, we welcome you today, all right. And Kingdom Life University, still for those that haven't signed up, uh, man, we're getting new students all the time, and uh, we, we just welcome you to investigate it a little further. Good stuff is happening yes. with the Kingdom Life University. Uh, well, our key verse in this section, because we're studying Matthew's chapters 1 through 10, is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And we've looked at the entrance of the king in chapter 1 through, the, through Mary, the mother of Jesus, as she birthed the kingdom of God on earth by birthing the king. What a wonderful opportunity. And then we saw the rise of the kingdom, the resistance with Herod, because the kingdom always causes Satan to try to push back yep. because Satan is losing the earth. Yep. Satan is losing control of the earth. Yep. In one period of time, 232 present governments are going to be transitioned over to the body of Christ. And think of this. When Satan's kingdom is totally put down at the end of the tribulation and Christ rules on earth with his people, that's us, there'll be unlimited resources <laughs> because there'll be no king on the earth that's greedy. I won't even need the, the thing that destroys kingdoms is greed. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's greed of, of heads of nations that destroy their nation. We were talking yesterday about the Marcuses in the Philippines. Yeah. How she used to fly over with yeah. a 747, <laughs> one for her entourage and another for her shoes. <laughs> she had probably the most exorbitant collection of shoes and they would shut down Saks Fifth Avenue stores just for her they would close the doors lock the doors because they knew she was going to spend millions of dollars in the store and yet her people were back home were starving so that's unjust God doesn't like an injustice and the earth is going to be filled with justice and the glory of the Lord and there'll be unlimited resources <laughs> I love this don't you in the millennium to build cities Vic is coming, I believe, but Vic is going to be needed and other builders to build cities in the millennium. Let's put this down on the earth where it belongs. The kingdom is just not some ethereal thing out there that we don't, you know, is going to hang on some uh, uh, cloud and play a harp. We need to prepare people now to rule and reign with Jesus shortly. I believe yes. it's coming rather shortly. Yes. yes. I believe we're getting closer and closer and we're going to see things happen. By the way, I'm going to be teaching in the book of Revelation this fall. I. <laughs> You can feel part of it coming in already. But I'll tell you what, we teach the now kingdom because the kingdom is now wherever Jesus reigns without resistance and rules is his kingdom. Now we've been looking at his prayer, so let's go quickly. This is the section, the believer and his worship. And the worship is done in two ways. Today, almost the entire chapter of six of Matthews talks about wealth. Two things, prayer and wealth. Prayer and wealth. And we have in chapter 6 of Matthew, the Lord's Prayer. We've been studying it here a little bit. Um, God's kingdom plan for the ages. Last week was thy will be done. Today, the part of the prayer, if you haven't gotten these, you can go back online into my YouTube channel and to Tiki Live and pick up every study we've done in Matthew. And if you want the studies for those, we can send them to you by Word, on Word document and you can go through those studies with us. What is the key? Today, the part of the prayer. Let's go through the Lord's Prayer up to this. Our Father, which art in heaven, our highest relationship. Hallowed be thy name, our highest worship. Thy kingdom come, our highest expectation. Thy will be done, our highest purpose. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, give Now today is give us this day our daily bread. Amen. Our highest provision. Yes. His daily bread, James, is our highest position, Bo. Amen. Provision, I mean. Our highest provision. Do you know five times in this chapter he says, take no thought? Mm -hmm. As I was studying in preparation, Five times in Matthew 6, Jesus said, take no thought about what you're going to wear. Take no thought about what you're going to eat. Take no thought about what the future holds. Take no thought, but seek ye first <laughs> the kingdom of God. I'm, I'm preaching a little bit here. You're getting me going this morning. I, I'm, listen, 
This is really beautiful chapter. Because it's a chapter. Hi there. It's a chapter all about provision. Say provision with me. Provision. Provision. Say more than enough. More than enough. God is not a God to meet your needs. It is not God's will to meet your needs. Stop praying that for heaven's sakes. It is God's will to give you an abundance. So you can give to others. Come on. It's not about you. It's about others. The whole purpose of the gifts of the Spirit is to reach out to others. You want a greater anointing? Find a greater need. If you're hurting financially, go find somebody to give to. Right. Amen. Make an apple pie. Take it over to the neighbor. Do something. It doesn't have to be fancy and big, but do something to begin to give. We called it on the farm, priming the pump. We had an old hand pump, you know, one of those old hand pumps. This shows how old I am. And sometimes it, it wouldn't work. So what you had to do is pour water in to get water out. Hello, this is not rocket science. Don't eat your seed. Don't eat your seed. And so, you know, we're talking here about about give us this day our daily bread. That's his promise. That's what Jesus prayed. Do you know how many people traveled with Jesus? Can you imagine the hotel costs? I mean, they were staying in inns. They weren't always living out in the dirt. Women were traveling with him as well as men. If you look at the entourage, it's talked about in Luke chapter 8. You know how Jesus was financed? Women. The women of Caesar's household. That's right. Makes it very clear. It actually names a couple of the women. Yeah. So it's very wealthy, governmentally related women. It wasn't the government that supported Jesus. It was women that got the vision of the kingdom and said, we're going to travel with this man. This man has a message. He is the king of kings. He's the Messiah. And we're going to go with Jesus. How, how did he pay for all this? And then he had all these crowds showing up. Everywhere he went, because his reputation was growing, thousands of people would follow him to the mountainside. And he stayed there for a whole day, and they were getting hungry. How would you like 3,000 people to show up at your house? One big loaf of bread. One big loaf of bread. I mean, that's what Jesus had. He didn't invite them. They were seeking healing and deliverance and message of the kingdom and, and they were so hungry to get what Jesus had. They said 3,000 showed up one day and the other day 5,000. Now you think this got the disciples uptight? You know, uh, Judas is over there doing his accounting. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have his credit card. <laughs> he says, where's my MasterCard? They carried MasterCard. Uh, <laughs> uh, nice. I mean, hello? you got to put yourself in their, their shoes. What, how are we going to do this, Lord? How are you going to feed all these people? Well, Jesus says, well, bring me what you have. See, that's always where God starts. Amen. Never ask for more. If you've got a thousand fishes and a thousand loaves, bring them. If you've got five, bring them. Whatever you have, bring. Because one of the greatest principles of the kingdom of God is called multiplication. Yes. Yeah. God doesn't know how to add. <laughs> Always multiply. Well, he knows how, but you know what I mean. If you'll study the principles of the kingdom, they're always multiplication. That little seed has in it the ability. I used to ask my dad, and you've heard this before, but I was raising a farm. I'm a old farm boy. I said, Dad, how, how can this one kernel of corn produce this stock with Hundreds of same kernels on it. I mean, and he always told me, my dad loved God. He, he teaches the word. He said, Jerry, God put in the seed the power to multiply. Yeah. In your seed is your power yeah. to multiply. Amen. That's awesome. That's all seeds. That's all seeds. And that's just financial. That's love. Yeah. That's giving your gifts to the church. Whatever you gives, multiplies. If you get nothing else, get that today. Now, key is, his provisions are totally based on his promises. So our, our first thing should be our attitudes that we should have toward provisions, toward wealth. You know what? 
Jesus said, your attitude toward money is your measurement of kingdom in your life. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a very rich young man came to Jesus. He said, hey, I've, I've been trained in the synagogues. I've gone to school. I got straight A's. Not only that, I've gone out and practiced all these commandments. And Jesus said, oh, because he said, I want to get in this kingdom that you've got. This kingdom sounds wonderful. Well, Jesus said, for you, it's so simple. Just go home and sell everything you've got and give the money to the poor. And then come back and I'll show you how. <laughs> how many pastors would do that today, huh? Oh, well. Richest man in town comes to your church and you, he comes forward to get saved. And you say, you know what? The Lord just showed me you can't get saved today. Because something's ruling over your heart. And Jesus is not going to be your king. So you can't be in the kingdom if Jesus isn't your king. So, before, so there's no confusion in your life and you have a double mind. I'm just going to tell you, get rid of one of the gods right now. And you know what? It, it'll be simple for you to follow the king. Just give away all you've got. Money won't be any more temptation to you if you don't have any. Yeah. <laughs> See, money is, money is not... Jesus called it filthy lucre and ungodly mammon. So money can do a lot of bad things to you. Hello. Because it can become your god. The Babylonian system of finance is run on money greed. That's, that's what drives it. So we are trying to overcome that mentality with kingdom finance. We're talking about kingdom finance this morning. So God says there's an easy way to direct your heart. You have control over your heart in this matter. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6, 21. He deals with a principle. So if you want your heart to be in the kingdom, what do you do? You treasure the kingdom. Amen. This is not rocket science. You know, it's so simple, it goes over our head. And then he says, don't divide your heart. He said, a divided heart becomes evil. That's what he said in verse 24. Somebody, I mean, let's look at Matthew, uh, Matthew 6, 24 real quickly because you'll see exactly what Jesus said. This, this is not my message. This is his message. Um, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. That's why it says it's diff he said it's difficult to be rich. Wealth creates a, an evil heart if you're not careful. Now there's some wonderful wealthy people and I believe that God as God prepares to finish the harvest on the earth, there's going to be enormous transfer of wealth. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a lot of money leave the hands of the wicked and go to the well. That, that's been prophesied for years. Yes, yes. So I'm not worried about money. I, I mean, I wish we had more for our harvest because we'd launch more teams. And, and, and we just recently launched another team in India a week or so ago, a couple weeks ago, when Dr. John Aru was here. I like to launch a thousand, but you know, I say, I'm saying, Lord, you have to provide to do that. Amen. I'm not going to beg people. This is your kingdom. Amen. This is your harvest. And if you want it done, you'll get it done, Lord. And so, uh, what, look at verse 23. This is the key. And if your eye is bad, your whole body is full of darkness. Isn't that interesting? Well, and let's go earlier because verse 21. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. And if your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. That's good. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Wealth can bring a darkness upon you. Some of the richest people are the most greedy. Greed, by the way, is not limited to the rich. You can be poor and be greedy. So, I mean, rich is not just, because, oh, the rich and the greedy. No, anybody can be greedy. 
So I know this is, this is interesting teaching this morning. Jesus really taught on this thing about the, your treasure. It was a serious matter with Jesus. But in line of that, if you go back in chapter 6 of Matthew, let's look at this. Take no thought. He's going to say over and over and over, take no thought, take no thought. You know what he's saying? You're thinking too much about money. Your constant focus is, how, how can I get more money? And what that does is it darkens your heart. Seek first the kingdom of God. I wrote a blog on tripping over the simplicity of Christ. I'm in a post. You ought to read this post because I went back and read it. I thought, dear God, you show me things here that kind of excite me when I go back and read them. <laughs> See, businessmen don't know that the key to business success is intimacy with Christ. They think it's learning all these success secrets that Babylon has. <laughs> Go to all these seminars and all these workshops on how to get, get more and have more uh, influence in, in the economic community and get more wealth. And they, they, they trip over the simplicity of Jesus, which is Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first His kingdom and His righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. You know, it's so nice to have a lot of things and not be controlled by them. Amen. We in America have a lot of things. I mean, if you compare us to the world. Sure. I remember going to the Philippines. I've mentioned, I think, this before. But you drive down these little back roads and you've got a little hut with pigs and chickens running underneath and about ten kids running around the hut. And they're all standing there waving, smiling, and look so happy and carefree. And I'm thinking, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> Then I pull up here, you know, and I see some guy in his Porsche, you know, and he's looking all fret, and he's trying to push me off the road to get to work quickly, and he's got to earn more money, and he looks all frustrated, and he's on the phone with one hand, you know, and trying to drive with the other, and I'm saying, where's your smile, man? <laughs> if you look over and smile at him, you're probably thinking, what, what's wrong with that guy? <laughs> so if you really want to know how to make sure that money doesn't control you, read Matthew 6 a few times through. Give it all away. Read it. Because you know what? There is a simple beauty in freedom. Amen. Consider the lilies. lilies. Mm -hmm. Solomon, who, by the way, was the richest man that ever lived, silver lost its value under Solomon. Mm -hmm. You know why? He owned it all. Had no more trade value. That's right. He would go play his chariots and yeah. military stuff. I mean, this man had money. And yet one flower, mm -hmm. if you really look at it in its beauty, is more glorious than Solomon. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, Jesus said, don't worry about these things. Yeah. And then he says, consider the birds. I love to go out and I read my Bible in the morning outside because there's so many birds, I don't know if, you know. And I'll never forget when we were leaving our house at, at uh, Princewood Court, two doves flew in our garage. This was a month and a half before we left. And I wanted to chase them out. And then the Lord said, no, leave them here. They had built a little nest, a nest on our garage door opener. <laughs> so every time we drove our car in the garage, there were these two little doves sitting up in their nest. This went on for like several weeks and then all at once two little eggs appeared. And then just the mama would come back, or I don't know if it's a mom or dad that sits on the eggs, or maybe they take turns, I don't know. But anyway, these eggs hatched, and then two little peep peeps appeared. And I mean, this is just right above our head. When we got out of the car, and they'd always kind of watch us, you know, so we'd see if they're gonna, if we're gonna attack them. Doves are wonderful little birds. And the day before we moved out of our house, they flew out of the garage. And I said, Lord, what is that? He says, you're moving with a double anointing. Mm -hmm. Praise God. The Holy Spirit appeared as a what? A dove upon Jesus. You know, look at the birds. They're not uptight. They're just flicking around, just enjoying life, right? Mm -hmm. So carefree. They don't have to study their bank accounts in the morning and see if it's gonna, checks are going to balance. Jesus wants us to be free from finance, from money, not let it control us. That's really the message. So don't have a divided heart over your finance. And then totally trust His love. 
If an earthly father, it's in your notes, being evil, Matthew 7, that's in the next chapter, by the way, if ye then, being evil as earthly fathers, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall the Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Listen, I love to bless my kids. Now, they graduated from the 20 cents to the dollar. Now they're up to the $5 level, junior high, high school. Dad, could I have five? I'm going to go over there to the store. You know, you know what I'm saying. And I try to, you know, I say, well, yeah, I'll clean the garage. You know, do something. And so they, they'll, or my daughter really has integrity about finances. She says, Dad, just don't give me the money. Give me something to do. She always asks for something to do before I pay her, and I think that's good. And, and Chris doesn't ask much. He just doesn't ask for money very much. But Bella's the one right now that she just loves to walk over to Publix and get all some goodies and different things, and she'll get some healthy food too. But she just likes the, the thing of going over there and buying with her own money. But I, as a father, I love to give to my children. It's a joy to me. If you're a father, you like to do that. And grandparents are even worse. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, he's here. Man. Okay. I'm telling you. And he showed me what grandma gave him. Yeah. I, so what, what, what is God saying? God's saying that we don't have to worry about these things. All right. Your provision is in his kingdom. We're going to finish with that. Your provision is in his kingdom. I want to finish with a verse out of 2 Corinthians 9 8. Turn there, if you will, with me. 2 Corinthians 9 8. And I think you'll really, really like this verse because it's kind of been a new driving verse in my life when it comes to finances. And there's some principles involved here that are really, really important. Let's look at it. 2 Corinthians 9 8. And God is what? Able. Able. Your provision is based upon the ability of God. Can we all say that? My provision is based on the ability of God. Now, I'm just going to ask, how able is God? Is, is he pretty good? Is he pretty good shape up there in heaven? I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, he cast in, in the one word he spoke the heavens. They actually discovered. They tell me. An asteroid in the heavens that was a mile wide that was solid gold. Somewhere out in space, there's floating around an asteroid. They say, as best they can understand, it looks like solid gold. Land on my property. <laughs> <laughs> that would finance our kingdom for a while. Let me just put it this way God ain't broke. Amen. All right. God is able to make all grace abound. So how, how is this ability released? Through grace. Not because we deserve it, but because He gives it. He chooses to give it. You know what? God has begun to bless us financially. We're receiving more blessing right now. You know why? Because my wife and I both now have opened up to the grace of God. Amen. My wife kind of has, Marianne has that integrity about her that she, she says, no, we don't deserve that. Don't take it. Don't take it. We don't deserve it. She's been saying that for years. She's totally changed her tune now. She says, hey, listen, I, I'm in the favor of God. Amen. I'm under the favor of God, and I'm just going to receive everything that God gives. And as a result of that, it's opened, I believe, our home up to more, more blessing. Mm -hmm. It's not based on your good works. It's based on the righteousness of Christ, on His finished work. Come on. <laughs> all right. And God is able to make all, all grace abound that always, say always, always. having all sufficiency, all sufficiency. In, everything, in everything, we may have a... Abundance for every good work. Now, two other verses I want to mention to you, really quick. Verse 6. This I say, he who sows sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. So, what releases 2 Corinthians 9 8? Verse 6. Sowing. 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 And that's a trust that the seed you put in the ground is going to come up. I'm telling you, as a farmer, your whole life depends on that. They had a huge drought in the Midwest this last year. You can put a lot of seed in the ground. And by the way, that seed is very expensive. And that seed just may not come up. 
but God's seed always Amen. comes up. Isn't that beautiful? Because it isn't based on our natural f forces here. All right, and then verse 12, I love this. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but is also abounding through many thanksgivings to God. And by, through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God. You see, God says, and it's, it's a, a gift of multiplication. Oh, here it is in verse 10. Uh, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply Amen. your seed. Do you feel loved by God? Do you feel loved by God? Yes. You know, as I was praying about this this morning, as I was really early doing this, getting things right, ready and finished for y'all. You know the Lord showed me. He says, tell your study. Your ability to receive the love of God is a key yeah. to this whole principle we're talking about. Yeah. God wants us to experience yeah. His love and trust Him. Yeah. And trust Him. Yeah. Love is trust. Isn't that right? Love is trust. Mm -hmm. And it's rest. Mm -hmm. It's rest. Give love to receive it. Give love to receive it. Mm -hmm. See, if she doesn't love me, maybe you haven't been loving her. Mm -hmm. Maybe the way you think you've been loving her, is, <laughs> it's just not her. She's not connecting with your kind of love, you know. Because people are built to respond, just like we in the kingdom God says so and it and you will reap. Is this does this make sense this morning? Yes. Yes. What does God say five times in Matthew take six? No take, take no, no thought. thought. But seek yes. first his kingdom. If you're a business person going into business as you are, Tammy, uh, whether you go to our school or another school, God's raising up business people. He wants you to prosper. Amen. He wants you to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, uh, God is raising up businesses today that have, are centered on the kingdom yes. and the finances are going to flow. The enemy will fight it because the enemy loves when a place is driven by greed. You know why? Because it'll have the outward appearance of great success for a time and then it bankrupts because yeah. the devil's a destroyer and a liar and a thief. Mm -hmm. Build it on giving. Build it on serving. Build it on loving. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that Jesus said five times in Matthew, take no thought about these things. Trust you, believe you, rest in you. You're a good God and you have good things for your people. Much more than an earthly father, you're our heavenly father. You are Jehovah Jireh and we worship you as our provider. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Make sure you fill out your forms if you're a student. Uh, and I sign those each week because we need to give you credit for your school. Yes, Carol. Is there another slide? Uh, I don't have... Oh, I have extra stuff in the notes that are not on the slides. Yeah. Oh, uh, the notes don't match and I can't... Oh, they aren't, didn't quite match this morning? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Carol's uh, administrator with our school so yeah see if you have any questions did I fill out all the all the no, okay no, I want to go no, through those real quick all right uh, five times Jesus said take no thought right uh, oh second Corinthians 9 8 all I finished with that I should have begun with it uh, what uh, God is able to make it's released through what sowing and reaping it's increased by the principle of multiplication, multiplication. okay we got that all right now money has the potential to be what Evil. Showy. <laughs> Let me go back on that. Yeah, you're right. I should have followed the notes just a little quicker. Sorry about that, class. And for those watching on the internet, this is a university course, so we've got to make sure we cover all the training, or when it comes to the time of the test, I'll be in trouble. So Not one. the students. Money okay. has the potential to number one. Yeah, money has the potential. Uh, because Jesus said in Matthew chapter uh, 8, or 6, I'm all right. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the same time. He says in Matthew 6, he said, here's what he says. Okay, let's go back and read that. Uh, Matthew 6, uh, 
Take ye that you do not your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise you have no reward with your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound the trumpet before you, like the Pharisees, the hypocrites, who go in the synagogues and in the streets. See, when they had a big gift, they evidently hire a trumpeter to go ahead of them and say, coming with a big gift. <laughs> so, you know, if God has blessed you, make sure you don't use that money to be showy. Number one, all right? That's kind of an interesting note, isn't it? Uh, money has a potential to be showy. Number two, money has a potential to control you. Is it showy? What was yeah, showy is the first one, yeah. And number two, the money has a potential to control you and cause you to be what? Double-minded. Okay, double-minded, yes, all right. Potential to be... Potential to control you. Money has a potential to control you and cause you to be double-minded. And we gave some examples of that in Matthew. And let me just... Oh, I, we read all those verses earlier. I just needed to follow the notes a little closer. Thank you, Carol. And then money uh, can be a blessing in the kingdom, but we must what? Give to direct and guard our hearts. That's what he teaches us. We must give to direct and guard our hearts. Where your treasure is, there where your heart be also. All right? Is that how, Carol? Thank you very much. Well, God bless you.